Rarely in political life does someone accumulate and then maintain that widespread acclaim that surrounded Barbara Bush during her most public years. Her husband survived the not so subtle jabs at his having a problem with the wimp factor, but in hyperpartisan Washington, Barbara Bush had no difficulty making and keeping friends. Her efforts promoting literacy were seen as sincere, not just some political gesture to help her spouse while in office. She cut back on the Hollywood glitz and opulence brought in by Nancy Reagan and made the White House just another family home. Policy and activism were not her cups of tea. You were not likely to see Barbara Bush debating issues at a cabinet meeting, disagreeing with her husband's strategies. Instead, she focused on being a kind of national grandmother. Since her death Tuesday night, the praises have poured in from major political figures to the quietest of common people, thanking her, commending her for a life of public service. But perhaps no single image of Barbara Bush has generated a greater reaction than this. In 1953, she and her husband lost daughter Robin to leukemia, just three years old. After all these years apart, mother, daughter, finally together again. And with their embrace, we finally fully understand why Barbara Bush did not fear her own approaching death, having already experienced the loss of a child and looking forward to a glorious reunion. You can comment on Facebook. Look for WFAA. Barbara Bush's services will be at the St. Martin's Church in Houston. We'll be live streaming the services, WFA.com, and of course our Facebook page. Just search WFAA. The coverage begins at 11 in the morning. Very nice tribute, John.